Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Father, we want to thank you and bless you. Again and again and again. For your loving kindness is better than life. The knowledge of you is life itself. We are here again, Lord God Almighty. Ostensibly to have a discussion about you, but really to just thank you. We are just magnifying you here. We're just going to be glorifying you and blessing you for the knowledge of you, for that which you are revealing to us, through us, in us. We give you all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you for being here this evening. Somebody was saying, where is Mr. Wande? You know, why should you say that about, about Dotun, who, who's, who was always the first person here, but now we don't, he comes late now, I don't know what's happened to him. I prepared, I said, the first question tonight would be to my grandniece, who I really want to, um, to start involving in these discussions, and I wish she would not just be speaking through her mom's laptop. I hope she has her own laptop. Anyway, so the first question is, is to Amara. Amara, is life fair at all? It's a very expensive laptop. It's better than my own self. I have them. Give, give, give her, put her on Zoom so that she can, <laughs> <laughs> so that she can, she can log in on herself, it doesn't have to speak through you. So I don't want to hear from Yemisi at the moment. The question is to Amara. Amara, is life fair? Um, I suppose for some people, it doesn't seem fair. People who are struggling. We're, we're talking about Amara. From your point of view, forget about some people. You're not going to talk about anybody but Amara tonight. Is life fair as far as Amara is concerned? Yes, when you sometimes when you think things are not when I think things are not fair, when I look back later on, it, it makes sense in hindsight. But do you think it is fair to everybody? Do you mean seems fair or, or is fair? Is fair. You think it is fair to everybody? If, if God is a God of justice, then yes. Is it fair that some people are rich and some people are poor? If being poor means that you inherit the kingdom of God later on, then is that not better than being rich on earth, maybe. Well, okay, you know, so is it unfair to be rich then? If the rich will not inherit, is it is it unfair to be rich? But if everyone will eventually enter the kingdom of God, even though there's maybe distinctions, depending on how you lived on earth, it is still fair. It's still fair. Okay. Is it fair to be beautiful or to be ugly? Uh, there are advantages to, to both. I guess you attract a lot of people if you're beautiful, but if you're ugly, the people who are around you are the ones who... So is it fair to be ugly? Uh, yes, in some way. In what way? Uh, the people who who uh, see who look at you and see you for your personality are the people who who really know you and admire you, as opposed to people who surround you because of 
how you look outwardly. Okay, thank you. I'm still going to come back to you. Same question to Yemi. Is God fair, Yemi? No, he's not fair. Why do you say that? Because, because of the definition of fairness. Okay, help so, us out. Uh, if you're fair, then it means that everybody has the same everything. So it kind of, um, or where everybody doesn't have the same of everything, what the one person has equates to what the other person has. Um, but I mean, if you look at the, uh, the thing with the talents, the what was it? Was it a proverb? I can't remember. Now. But so it says he gave one. He gave one ten. He gave so there was obviously a distinction in what he gave everybody. It does say according to. So was where, that was it unfair? That was actually Jesus. I said that was that unfair of yeah. Jesus. What I'm saying. By by no by because it says he gave them what they were able to use, what they had the capacity to use, and and at the end he was more interested in what the way he rewarded them was by what they did with what they had. Not he didn't make the distinction. Yeah, you, you are saying two different things. You are saying are you saying he is fair? I thought you started by saying he is not fair. Exactly. I'm, no, what I'm saying is that by the, world, by the world standard, and one person picked up on that unfairness. So the person who had one um, realized that God isn't fair. God is just, but he is not. According to the standards of the world, he's not fair. How can a God that is not fair be a just God? Um, in many ways, because in the, in this, in the, the, the if he's able to, if he has a unique way of balancing the skills, then he can be just. And he, and he usually does have a unique way of balancing the skills. And because our life does not end in this place, there is, an, there is his skills uh, uh, span all of eternity. So of, the definition of fairness only exists in the world that we live in. It doesn't, um, it is bound by time and place. So you, you, I don't see how you can use that. You can't apply it to God. You can't. <laughs> you must be able to apply it to him. Okay, I'll come back to you. Uh, Sister Alpa, the same question. Is life fair at all? My radiant sister. Uh -huh. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, I'll... I will say life is, it doesn't seem to be fair, but it is fair. Because, okay, so, um, so, so explain, explain these uh, semantic <laughs> distinctions for ignorant people like okay. us. Uh, because at the end of it all, you find out um, God has a way of balancing. He balances everything at the end. Let's take an example. Today, I might be rich. Someone else does not have what I have. And five, five or oh, one month down the line, I will not have what I have again today. It's someone else that has it. It can be raining in Lagos today, and it's sunny in Sokoto, and the next thing you know, it is still, it changes. So I think it goes, there's a way he takes it around that nobody has everything and everything. He just has a way of shifting it and everybody has a bit of every, bad and good and all what we feel is fairness. Okay, uh, Stapa, is, is it fair that some people should be strong and some people weak? Well, I believe that the, the, even the strong person has a moment of weakness. And the weak person will have a chance to be strong in his lifetime, too. So nobody stays yeah, but strong. What, 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 do, what do you need a chance when you can be strong all through? Why do you just want a chance to be strong? 
That's what I'm saying. So even the strong person doesn't stay strong all the time, forever, as in all his lifetime. He gets a moment where he's also weak and he might not be weak as, as in not having strength, but there's a time that he's broken down too. And he gets to his knees. It's a weakness. He becomes what about what too. about what about somebody who is beautiful and somebody who is ugly? Uh, the person that is beautiful will one day not be beautiful. Age okay, will, but, but, age but, will but, but with the person who is ugly, will he one day be, be beautiful? At least the person who is beautiful has been beautiful for some time. <laughs> Whereas the person who is ugly <laughs> does not get to be beautiful. Okay, let's have the answers. <laughs> huh? I give up. I'm just going to I interrogate. Up, I'm, I'm just going to interrogate your answers. I'm, who told you I have any answer? I will interrogate uh, okay. your answer. All right, my case for now. Okay, all right. <laughs> yes, let me see. Your hand is up. I just wanted to say that you know, strength is overrated. Um. I have, there's this very strange thing I, I got from my father because you know, he's very strong for whatever reason. And, and I, I'm also very strong without understanding why. So um, uh, I'm, I'm always lifting water bottles and changing tires, which isn't good if you're a woman because men don't come and help you. So, I, I mean, I think I would have preferred to not be so strong so that, you know, people <laughs> <laughs> opening doors for me and I just realized too late the advantages of you know being more feminine and no you know well let, let, let's pose that question to to Chuchu who 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 likes to be uh, who likes to be manly yes Chuchu are you with us or are you on the road Good evening. I'm still on the road. Sorry. Okay. okay. All right. We'll come back to you. Um. Hola, uh, Wande. Good evening, sir. Good evening, church. Good evening. Good evening. How is your piano going? Very well, sir. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. God. Yeah. Is God fair? Yes, God is fair. Is life fair? Yes, life is fair. Please explain both. Yeah, I'll start by saying that um, life is fair and God is fair. But to the individual, that's to us. We have to carry our cross. If I'm beautiful, it is a cross. If I'm ugly, it is also a cross. And Christ says we should deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow him. So I mean by that, what I mean by that is that <laughs> if I'm beautiful, it is a cross, whether I like it or not, because I, the disadvantages and the advantages are interwoven and I will bear the consequence. So in bringing it to God now, God who made everything and made it a cross for each person and says we should carry it, as a purpose, because in carrying your cross and denying yourself, you, you, you will die and you resurrect eventually. So I believe God is fair and life is fair. So let's, let's, let's take an example. You know, Nigeria, I think we are making barely $30 billion a year. I'm not sure. We might be making a little bit more now with this with this conflict in Iran in in, um, in Ukraine. Okay. But Elon Musk is worth three hundred billion dollars. Okay. One man. Hmm. Is that fair? Well, before we got to where we are today, I will say Nigeria has, was swimming at some point mm -hmm. in riches. Mm. <laughs> Very yeah, deep times. Riches, riches, the, the, the riches compared to that of Britain or France. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> but we were self, we were sufficient. It wasn't we're as never bad sufficient. as today. We're never sufficient. What I mean by that, what I mean by that, it wasn't as bad as today, where everybody is crying, everybody is complaining, and everybody is planning to leave the country. 
So I want to believe that Nigeria as a country, if well managed and uses its resources well, can earn more. Yeah, but we are, not, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are we are diverting from the question. All this one that you are saying has nothing to do with my question. What's your question again? My question is that Elon Musk is worth nearly three hundred billion dollars. And so, and the whole of Nigeria of like two hundred million people, mm. we make like thirty billion dollars a year. Is it fair so, that one man has, should should should? Be worth three hundred billion. But is he going to is, is he going to feed Nigeria? Forget about that. Is it fair? <laughs> you, 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 you keep you keep avoiding the question. It is, is it fair, fair that one man should fair. be that rich? It and, is fair. Yeah. Please explain to me how why it is fair. First of all, he must whatever work he has done to earn what he's earning. is different from what Nigeria is doing as a country. So if Nigeria has the opportunity to, 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 to partake in such whatever uh, operations is doing, they will earn as much too. Mm, not necessarily. I mean, Elon Musk is very hardworking, but you know, there are some people that steal that much. I mean, people say, Putin is richer than Elon Musk, that we just don't know his, you know, I mean, did he earn the money? I, I believe it's fair anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you just believe, but you don't know what your, you don't know the basis of your belief. Okay, all right. But you are not stating it. <laughs> so I'm going to move from you. You, are, you okay. don't seem to be able to, to, to tell us why, why you believe what you believe. Well, first of all, Nigeria is not using his resources well. If not, they earn as much. Okay, or... you, you, you think that. All right. Um, Dr. Adelike. Mr. Adelike, are you here? Let me move to Putamono Belemato. Hello, sir. Yeah, good evening. Is God fair, Stephen? Well, God is fair, uh, but life is not fair. <laughs> okay, explain the distinctions, because I was going to ask both questions. Well, God is fair because uh, in his own infinite mind, he, he, he knows the end from the beginning. So he has the benefits of hindsight, insight, foresight, and all that. But for us who are within the the field playing the the game or the ball is not fair because uh, apart from the fact that we do not have a total understanding of all things uh we find ourselves in situations where oftentimes we are found wanting and so uh somebody who is beautiful obviously has an advantage over somebody who is uh, not beautiful elon Musk has his own advantage over individuals or countries. So uh, the unfairness of life from my own perspective, you know, uh, um, nevertheless uh, helps life to be what it is, but life is not fair. So who gave Elon Musk his talents? God gave Elon Musk his talent. Why didn't he give it to the same talent to Steve Paribolos? Well, within the scheme of his own um, his own purpose and according to the counsel of his will uh, um, my talent you know and that of elon musk can be the same so uh of course elon oh, musk but, is but you say he is fair well god is fair because at the end of the day i think just like sister Alpha has explained um uh, everything falls into place so the unfairness in this time is subject to to time is because we exist in time. So the unfairness comes in. But at the end of the day, he is the one who, who decides who has this talent or that talent. So I, where I, would want to, I would have wanted to have Elon Musk's talent. Uh, it should feel good when you have $100 billion. I mean, uh, that is just my own perception about uh, the reality of life. But uh, doesn't mean that God is unfair. 
Okay. Thank you. Mr. Adinka. Are you with us? Good evening, George. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Is God fair? God is fair. He says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Is that fair? It's fair. In which case, you will have mercy on some people and they will not have mercy on some people. Does that sound yes. like it is fair? It's fair, sir. Why is it fair? Why, 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 why do you say he is fair? Yeah. Whoever he wants to have mercy on, he has laid down principles of who he will be fair to. And among the universe, whoever he followed he, that he, path, he never laid down any principle about who he will be, be fair to. What, what is the uh, principle? There is no principle that he laid down. That, as to, he says, I will be fair to whom I want to be fair. There's no principle. He didn't lay down any principle. Sir, I remember that in Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 to 14, yeah, whoever well, follows precepts there, it will be fair to them. He will have mercy on them. And there's another scripture that said, if we call on him, he will heal our land and he will have mercy on us. So those are the principles or guidelines of God being fair to us. Mr. Dinka. Sir. Does grace apply to everybody? Grace. I say, it says I will be gracious to whoever I want to be gracious to. Does he apply his grace to everybody? Yes, everybody has a measure of grace. Where Everyone does he say where, where where does he say that in scripture? Well, from this uh, perspective, sir. Anyone that comes to Christ, grace abound. But the growing of the grace now depends on individual. But does everybody come to Christ? <laughs> well, me, I've gone to Christ, sir. I can't <laughs> answer for everybody. You say that you say that his grace is with everybody. That's why I'm asking you. Does everybody what come to Christ? What I mean is that at salvation, at salvation, anyone that has salvation, anyone that believes at salvation has a measure of grace, sir. Yeah, but does everyone believe? Everyone does not believe, sir. So the grace does not extend to everybody. Yes. Okay, Mr. Adebayo, thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, Begay and Dang, are you with us? Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. We are trying to, we are trying to, we're looking at the fairness or unfairness of God and the fairness or unfairness of life. Is life fair? Um, I don't think life is fair. Why not? Uh, because what is considered fair in this life, and if you go by what is considered fair or unfair in this life, you just draw that conclusion that life is not fair. For instance, why would why would um, bad people prosper to seek, you know, in this life? Why would they have wealth, you know, in this life? Why would they live long? Why would they? Um, why would they? Why would they prosper in that sense, you know, of, of this life of, of prosperity in terms of, you know, just doing well. And then you see good people who still, you know, bad things happen to. They still get involved in accidents. They still fall sick, you know, even though they are good. So in that in that sense, I would say life is not uh, 
we can't conserve life to be, to be fair. Who is the author of life? Um, so the author of life is God. Is God fair? Yes, God is fair. God is fair, but he creates a life that is not fair. Um, yeah, so here and now, I would, um, I would distinguish the, the life. So um, the life I was referring to in my first um, analysis is, you know, what is regarded as life. Life of the flesh. Yes, life, life of the flesh, exactly. So, but when we don't know the real life, and knowing that Christ is life, um, we know that we are talking totally different thing. And if you ask me to, if you ask me whether um, God is fair in terms of that life, I would say yes, He is fair. Why would you say because yes? Not not everybody is in Christ. Uh, but for those who are in Christ, you would only know the life if you are in Christ. So if you're not yes, in but Christ... Not every, but, I, but not everybody. <laughs> no man can come to Christ unless God draws him. But he's not drawing everybody at this point. <laughs> okay, that, that, that's right. He's not drawing everybody. And uh, it's, for his, it's for his own reason. Uh, in the same way, I would think that he is the one who can determine really what is fair or unfair. We don't know what is fair. We don't know what's unfair. So we, should, that so, so we should know you'll be talking about it. <laughs> Perhaps we shouldn't. <laughs> Perhaps we shouldn't be talking about it because really, who, who knows what is fair and who knows what is unfair? Because whatever you, con you may consider as unfair today, if I give you, you know, 10 years down the line, you will then realize that it was actually fair. You know, so from that experience, God is fair. <laughs> God is fair. Okay, thank you. Yes, Mr. Adelite, huh? you went A-W-O-L. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I, when you are the we are discussing with Bege. What came to my mind was that uh, uh, sometimes it's very difficult to to say God is not fair because the God we know, according to the base of the knowledge and understanding that we have, that is fair, that is not a respecter of persons, you know. And the only thing there is that the the grace that uh, He gives to to us is for everybody. It might now be different time because it determines the time. It determines the time. Some people, you know, experience the grace in the morning. Why some in the afternoon? Why some in the night? God determines the time and he determines the best at a particular point. Yes, but whether, also he, whether he determines it does not does not make, make sure that it is fair. So why should he why should he call some people in the morning and then some people in the night? The fact that he's the yeah, one that determines it doesn't make it fair. Uh, well, uh, well, well, we also know that our God is fair. <laughs> we well, know well, how, do you, how do you know it? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to find out from you. You just know something. Uh, what is the basis of this knowledge? Well, well, well what I, what, what I under, what, the reason I know is that I know that uh, uh, his love is the author of the finisher of our feet. And whoever he calls, Whoever he calls to himself at a, at a particular point, God is the one that be the, that is the one that be the hiding place. Whatever they do at every particular point is the one that is uh, helping them. So I know that it's fear to them. It's yes, not fear to us. Is it, what about the people he doesn't call? Well, if he doesn't call that at a the time, there will be a particular time he will, he will call them. Maybe at that time, it's not a, it's not a, a, the call is not full. Oh, the, <laughs> the call the, is not yet full. The, 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 the timing itself is fair. <laughs> okay, you mean the timing? Yes, the, 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 the timing itself not make one fair and another one unfair. Well, it's difficult for us to, we cannot, it's the one that can still determine the best time that is fair. You know, 
is in one where our own is to agree with him because we believe that yeah we are running away we are, we are, we are running away from the discussion thank you we don't want to discuss the matter you are not you are not you are not sufficiently confident with god mm -hmm. to discuss the matter i want to i want to put you on the spot you are not you know i mean you 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 you, you there are certain conclusions that you don't want to conclude uh, even though it comes from your own reasoning, but you still don't want to reach the conclusion. So how can we have a discussion? Uh, Samuku, are you here? Good evening, Church. Good evening. Is God Good fair? Good evening, Doctor. I'm here. Is God <laughs> fair? <laughs> well, um, from my own point of view, I would I would like to respond this way. As far as the human notion of fairness is concerned, God is not fair. Thank you. Thank however, you for that, for that one to start with, yes. However, um, I also feel that where God is concerned, the issue of fairness should not even arise. And I will explain why. Okay. Let us imagine that you, Dr. Aribisala, are a filmmaker. You want to make a film, you want to produce a film. You have written your script. You know what is to happen inside the story. You know, you have decided, you have, you have done your casting and chosen the people who are going to play the different parts. Fantastic. When they are going to come in, sorry? I said fantastic. Sorry. I give me a fantastic uh, <laughs> parable. Oh, yeah, go on. Okay. So you you are you are you have decided who is going to come in at what time, and what the person is going to do, and when the person is going to leave the the, the, the scene, and you have planned everything. So you know how your script is. There is no way an actor will come in and do something outside of that script, even though with his um, uh, artistic excellence, he is allowed to perform the role to the best of his, his or her uh, ability. And even, you know, add some, some uh, personal characteristic to the role. However, the role does not change. Uh, hold script, on, Sam, hold on, hold on, Sam. But he has made you, Sam, the main actor. And he has made me to be somebody that just cleans the latrine in the, the scene and goes out. Now, why should you be I'm the coming star? to that. Why, why should you be the star of the show and me just the latrine cleaner? Oh, yeah. <laughs> why should he give you I'm coming, the star? I'm coming, I'm coming to that. Okay. I'm coming to that. The fact is this. Because he knows what the story is about, and he knows who he wants to play which part, and he knows the type of person that he wants to play each part, it is him who will decide who is going to do, be the star and who is going to clean the toilet. Because <laughs> the person, the person who is, the person who is going to clean the toilet, he requires the person to have certain characteristics, whether physical or emotional. Who gives but, him that? Who gives the person those characteristics? <laughs> yeah, of course. He, he has given to everybody different characteristics, <laughs> and you must know. You must know that he can choose anybody to play any part. <laughs> so the same way as the man who was employed in the morning cannot grumble that the man who was employed in the evening is paid the same amount, the actor cannot come and say, uh, well, why did you give me this part? I want to be the star. Why is Dr. Femi Arizala the star? No, it, it, the script has been written. So it's now a question of each person play your role as you have been given and play to the best of your ability. The fact that your uh, one person is a cleaner and the other person is the star does not change the fact that if you remove that cleaner from there, then that story is not complete. The cleaner is part of the script and somebody has to play it. The star 
is part of the script and somebody has to play it. Okay, okay, Sometimes it's... okay, Sam. I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to you in a minute because I want to I want to interrogate what you have said. Looking at Ecclesiastes, but you know, Yemisi has a hand up. What does he want to say? I'm gonna come back to you, Sam, in a minute. Yemisi, yes. Okay. I wonder why people have problems with cleaning toilets. <laughs> well, I just, no, I just, no, said, that, I just said that casually. No, I know, but it's a serious statement because you usually find people complaining, even the guy with the one talent. Well, it's not a glorious job now. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, but who said so? Because really, you find that, that you actually enjoy cleaning that toilet if you agree with God. So I don't, I'm, I'm not sure about the analogy. Anyway. Bye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Maybe it was it was foolish of me to say that, but I said that flippantly. Yes. Back to you, Sam. I want to show you a scripture and see whether it agrees with your you know your brilliant um, um, script, which is really very interesting. Um, um, it's uh, Ecclesiastes nine eleven. Okay, now, in this casting business, uh, mm. the swift, okay, should be cast in a particular role. The strong okay. should be cast in a particular role. The wise should be cast in a particular role. Those that are skillful should be cast in a particular role. But this is what God does. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. So in choosing these stars of your fantastic stage play, uh, he disarticulates even the criteria that he establishes or the talents that he establishes in placement of the roles that will, they will play. Sam. I'm listening. Yes, I'm listening. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you respond to that? It, it, it doesn't really follow your this thing that yeah. this person no, is killed, he's doing this, so he's going to play this role. This person is good at this, so he's going to play that role. No, oh, no, no, no. So no, he no, doesn't no, use no. that. I will explain. Don't worry, let me, explain, let me explain that to you. Hmm? Now, um, I will explain what happened. Um, there, is the, there is an actor friend of mine, I know his name is Femi Durojai. Now, Femi came and said, Sam, please, I want to do a radio theater program. And I know you can handle it. Can you please organize an audition for me? So we said, OK, we put out audition notices. And people came for audition, and we were auditioning. He was in the panel, I was in the panel, and somebody else. There were three of us. And so when we audition each person, we give them marks according to their performances. And after everything, we now compared notes. Now the, 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 the people that he had marked as his uh, choices of uh, suitable characters for the, the script. Remember, it is his own play and it is his script. So he had marked out certain people and said, these are the uh, ones that he feels uh, uh, did well and, uh, in the audition and are suitable. When he looked at my own script, he thought that hardly anybody in his script was in my own, in, in my own uh, uh, um, cast, my own choice. And he said, ah, Sam, all the people that me I felt were the the right and the correct people to do this thing. You didn't even score them. You didn't score them high at all. In fact, almost all of them are not even in your own list. How come? The ones that you are in your list, in my own list, they didn't even score well. And I said to him, Femi, you want to do a radio theater production, not a live stage production. Therefore, while you were looking at the people's acting ability, looking at their features, and looking at other things, I knew that on radio, we are not seeing any of those things. So I was only listening for the quality of the voice and the tonal differences in the voices. So that when I put them on radio, 
I don't have people sounding yeah, but this, uh, this, this analogy does not apply to God now. No, no what I mean is... It doesn't, no, this, let me explain. This one, this one doesn't work, Sam. Let me, let me explain how. Okay. Let me explain how. Now, the how of it is this. Uh, I, am, I am the one who is, is directing this, the, the project. And I know what is required for the job. So if it is in, like in the case of God, if it is a question of the, the, um, the race being to the swift, then God would have given the race to the, would have made it the race to the swift. But okay, it is not on, necessarily hold, so. Hold on, hold on, Sam. Okay. Number one, it is a race. Okay. So the person who is going to win the race is a person who breasts the tape first. All right. Yes. Now, so it follows that the person who is going to get to the tape should be the fastest man. Logically, right? Okay. Now, logically, God now, God now gives one man the ability to run very fast, and another man is not able to run very fast. And it is a race. He does not redefine it as something else but a race. Exactly. Okay. Right. So why is it that the fastest man does not win the race? Now, the scripture tells us that time and chance happen to all, is it not? So let us take a look at another race. The tortoise and the hare. They no, forget about that. Forget about that. It, you are going away from God. Forget about the, about the examples and, of man. We are, we are bringing examples of no, man. But, Just let's face this race. No. Forget about the tortoise and the hare. Okay? Let's yes. face this race. Huh? Let us, God, yeah, let us. God, God defines, determines the race. The race is still going to be the person who breaks the tape first. Huh? Exactly. Why is it that God now says... It is not the fastest man that you win the because, race. Because the same God says that the first will be the last, the last will be the first. He can do anything. He is, it is possible that he will make the slowest man to breast the tape first if he wishes. So it is it, so 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 let's get back to the question. Is it fair that the fastest man does not win the race? Is it fair? that the man who is bad at school is the one that comes first in the exam. Is it fair? I mean, you know, I can, I can continue giving you all this. Is it yes, fair? Yes, I know. Is, is God's approach a fair approach? From the point of, standpoint of a man's uh, view, I have already said that God is not fair. But you see, when it has to do with him doing he 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 can do anything anyhow he likes. So the yes, question of the anything the question anyhow of... he does, how do you characterize it? The thing he does anyway anyhow cannot be fair. I characterize it as happening according to his discretion. So Thank that's you. Why but, you it... but, but you cannot characterize it as fair. No, <laughs> let's, I cannot. Let's, let's face it. You can't call it. Fair. If the race no, is not to the swift, not. it is not fair. <laughs> it is not but fair. God, if the battle is not to the strong, it isn't fair. Because it, should, God, be, it, is. it should be to the strong. Um, so, but it doesn't want but, to be fair. But it's not no. necessarily to, to the strong. After all, David was not the strong guy in his fight with Goliath. I don't understand the point you're making there. The battle, if it is a question of the stronger, then Goliath should have won. But yes, I'm saying so, so. I'm saying that so it is not fair. I mean, you know, so don't let us, don't let us, you know, because because we want to be pious. God, no, it's not fair. It's not fair God at all. Doesn't it's not want fair. to be fair. Let's let's, let's get started this straight. He no, doesn't not fair. want to be fair because you can't tie him down and say. This is how it's going to work. This is because X plus Y is equal to whatever. Uh, one plus Precisely. two. You know, he can come and tell you that one plus two is five. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> you know, now it isn't fair that if you say one plus two 
is, is fine. Because if you do it, if you do it in accounting, they will tell you you are doing rubbish. So I just want to get I, I just want to get certain things so that we are not, we are not, you know, I mean, you know, people will tell you God is good all the time. And they are lying. No, lying. They know that that is not the case. Okay. And in the end, we have to deal with the reality of God and then come and accept that, wait a minute, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Not that we pretend that he is good all the time when we know he is not. Not that we pretend that he is fair when we know he isn't because we just want to be pious. You don't have to be diplomatic with your father. You don't have to be. Thank you, Sam. Let me let me let me go back to 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 my my grandniece. Amara, are you still there? Let me see. Is Amara still there? She is. Sorry. Okay, Amara. Which is better, to be tall or to be short? This is a question now to Amara. It is not a question about God. From Amara's point of view, is it better to be tall or to be short? The advantages to both, maybe. Is Amara there? Can, can you hear me? I can't hear you. It's the microphone. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Are there are advantages to both, I think. Which is better? To be tall, I guess. Which is better, to be educated or to be an illiterate? Educated. Which is better, to be rich or to be poor? Rich. <laughs> to be rich. Which is better, to the, was it be the MD of the company or the Kate Getmart? Sorry? Which is better, to be the MD of a company or to be the Getmart? I don't know. If, if you, it depends I'm, on the content. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that it's taking you a long time to answer because <laughs> uh, I, I think you think that I'm setting up a trap for you. So you are not sure what to say. Okay, let me pose the question to Yemi. See, Yemi, see which is better to be beautiful or to be ugly? In between. <laughs> <laughs> I say, which is better? There is no in between. <laughs> well, I, I, I kind of agree with what Amara says. If you're ugly, you kind of, you know your friends. And people, yeah, they, they, you think that beautiful people don't know their friends? They have a lot of fake people flocking around them. So people, you know, most people gravitate towards them for their beauty. So which is better from Yebisi's point of view? Would Yemi see rather be beautiful or would she rather be ugly? <laughs> I don't want to be ugly. <laughs> <laughs> it's too difficult. Uh, would you would you rather be educated or would you rather be an illiterate? Educated for sure. Would you rather be poor or would you rather be short? Would I rather be poor or short? Or, or, uh, Poor or rich? I'd rather be, I'd rather be short than poor. <laughs> would you rather be poor or would you rather be rich? <laughs> I'd rather be rich, to be honest. I don't, uh, poverty is... Would you rather be blessed or not blessed? Oh, blessed, for sure. So how do you deal with Jesus' statement that blessed are the poor? He never said blessed are the rich. No, he didn't. So how do you how do you uh, navigate between the two, between your disposition and the message of the gospel? I well, I have already given myself over to the message of the gospel. 
because I, <laughs> you haven't yeah, because when i asked you your answers are different from I'm what, what I'm, is presented I'm, in the gospel <laughs> <laughs> i'm being truthful i know what's before but i'm not rich so so i believe that god will always give me what is good for me i might not like it but that's the story of my life <laughs> the gospel says woe unto you who are rich yeah I, well, and you know, you, said you prefer to be rich. If, if the thing is, if I'm rich, I will. I'm going to give away a lot of my money. So, so if you are rich, you will become poor. Ah uh, well, I will. I will. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I, I won't be rich in the sense because you are you are presenting extremes. So, um. Again, it's like talking about fairness. What is fairness in the world? What's rich? What's being rich in the world? Um, you know, if you have a lot of money and you're not spending it on yourself, are you rich? I don't know. Okay, yeah, Mr. Thank you, Barnabas Bulus. Good evening, sir. Good evening, church. In this Hello, discussion, I, yes, we can, I, can, I can hear you. I'm the one that is wasting time. In this discussion, uh, you find that we are navigating between constructs. A lot of the time, we're talking as if we're in the world, and then we're talking as people who are operating in the kingdom of God. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so if I ask you, if I, if, if, if if the scriptures tell you that if you want to live, you must die, would you want to die? If I want to be rich or if I want to live. If you want to live, you must die. Okay, if I want to live. Yes. Would you choose death over life? Yeah, because I have an understanding of what that death means. So I'm not sure you're talking about uh, the animal uh, the animal life in me dying. But what is he talking about? So if I want to leave, I yes, need to says, die. If you want to leave, you have to die. Because he's fine now. Yes, yeah, so it's, 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 I think it's more about, it's more or less talking, telling me about me dying to myself, dying to my desires and, and um, all those things that are, uh, are of me or of, of my human body, but are not really of God. So you would choose you would choose death. As much as I can, yes. Okay. If the scriptures tell you that in order to be rich, you have to be poor. Would you choose poverty? So I'm gonna answer it the same way. I still think it's um what do you think it is talking it has about? The same, it, it has the same explanation. No, it doesn't. With uh, it's, Jedi, it's Jedi. Explained, uh, it doesn't. So you have to explain it to us to show us that it does. I maintain that it doesn't. Okay, so I, I'll, I pose I'll, it, I'll, I'll, I pose I'll, it as a second question to your first one because I believe it does not. Hmm. If you want to be rich, you have to be poor. Yes, it's not so, okay. It's talking so, about spiritual poverty, it's talking about physical poverty. Okay. Um, now I get your your interpretation of that, and in line with that, the aim of at the end of the day is being poor. Sorry, being rich, right? So yeah, I can be poor because I know that I'm guaranteed of being rich. <laughs> he never about... lies. <laughs> but, Since but, he's gone, Barabbas. I'm yes. not talking hypothetically to you. You think I'm I'm having a hypothetical discussion? No. You want so, to be, so, do you want do you want to be poor in order to be rich? Yes, because I know that that riches will definitely come, since he has said so. So yes. If I'm it doesn't come, poor, if it, does, if it doesn't rich. come, if it doesn't come, would you still want to be poor? So, like I said, right? Because of the understanding that I have now. I'll still maintain my position, yes. 
the reason yeah. is I know that his did watch hear, is not going to. Did you hear what yeah. I said? I said if it doesn't come, would you still want to be poor? For his sake, yes. But how will it not even come? Since he has said it will come. Well, the people in the Hall of Faith huh, did yes. not receive what was promised them. I don't understand. The people in the Hall of Faith yes. did not receive the promises. At all? They didn't. Is it not in your Bible? Do you only mediate God through a result? Sorry, I didn't get that. Do you only? <laughs> I'm giving you a hard time. Do you only mediate God through a result? Did I do you do only mediate God through a result? No, 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 no. I mean, we 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 cannot do that, right? Yeah, but you are emphasizing uh, fact, the fact that the knowledge of the fact that you are going to be rich is the reason why you are accepting poverty. <laughs> so when I when I so when I so, so when I okay, so, I, yeah, go on. Okay, so when so, I tell but, you. My, my, my presentation of my response is if riches is the end point or the aim of uh, whatever process I'm going to go through, right? I'm willing to be poor because I know that the riches will come. What if right? it is not? Except what if it is not? So like I said, if it is not, fine, it's God. Yeah, so why are you making it the condition? Why, do, why are you saying if it is riches? That is the why are you saying no, okay. So, 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 so my, my point, point. My, 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 my point is my point is right with God, right? There is no uh uh there is no option, so to say. So he said, I should do this, I need to be poor to do whatever it is. At this point, he wants me to be poor, right? So I'm taking the first step now to be poor, but even mm -hmm. if Yes, my but, mind. But, but you are but you are you are adding that you are taking the first step because you want to be rich. Yeah, that, that's why I said if I'm putting my mind on that uh, end uh, end result, yes, I would be I would be poor. But I mean, I'm not even so. What I'm trying to say is, I'm not even supposed to put my mind to the end result, right? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yes. Like, so I have that understanding. What I'm saying is, if my aim is just to be rich, I can still decide to be poor because I know that God said I'll be rich. But I mean, between me and God, I know that if God wants me to, be, if God is say, telling me to be poor now, I don't even have an option. Yeah, but you see, but you see, but you see, <laughs> Barnabas, okay? Yeah. Let me spend some time on you. Hmm? I gave you two options. I said, would you like to be poor or would you like to be rich? Okay. But you gave me an answer that combined both. You want to be poor because you want to be rich. You understand? And I asked you to choose one. But somehow, Barnabas, you can't choose the poor without thinking of the rich. And I say, you know, basically, I mean, you know, the option I gave you is choose one. Okay? When you decide, you know, you, you said, I, I will choose poor because I'm going to be rich. Now, and I told you, I said, well, the people in the Hall of Faith, okay, did not base it on a promise. So while you were talking, I decided to open it to you because you don't seem to be aware of it. These all died in faith, not having received the promises. You understand? Okay. For those who say such things, declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind the country from which they had come, they would not have opportunity to return. Okay. They said, you know, um, therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. Now, they are not basing it on the promise, all right? So if God says, Barnabas will be poor, will he accept poverty rather than saying, okay, I'm going to accept it because later on I'm going to become rich? Huh? Because really, the riches that you are talking about, God is, ne is, is, God is not interested in it, okay? So when he tells you that he wants you to be poor, huh? he's not telling you to be poor because he's not going to make you dollar rich. 
okay? It's going to define riches in a way that has nothing to do with this world, which is a different level of riches entirely. Mr. Adelike, why are you raising your hand? I get it. Mr. Adelike. Yeah. Yes, sir. I want yes. to... Yes, sir. I wanted, Please. I wanted to ask a question before. When you when you are when you are talking with the Barnabas and and uh, he, he look as if he's putting a condition, but well, I don't understand because I know that when when if he make us to be poor, if we are poor, the guarantee that we have is that we'll be like him. Even the rich, if we're looking at the rich, it, it, it does it not look as if we are limiting. The 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 purpose of being poor, you know, that's the that's what I I, I wanted to ask. Okay, the, the question is this. Uh, let, let me ask it to you. Let me ask it to you, Doctor. Although I've spoken to you before, and there's some people I haven't spoken to today. Um, can somebody who is in Christ, okay, lack anything? Hello, sir. Did you hear the question? No, I didn't hear. I didn't hear. You only heard, you said, can somebody in Christ? Can who somebody is who Christ? is in Christ be poor or rich? Well, I, I, I believe that uh, we are the one, the way we define the poor and the rich, which is the rich. I don't know whether. Uh, when it comes to Christ, it's really important. Once we are in Christ, I believe that once we are in Christ, whatever where we are, we are we are we are okay. Either we are rich or poor. Once you are in Christ, everything is okay. We just nothing should, uh, riches. We shouldn't be determined by either rich or poor. The most important thing is we are in Christ. We are children of God, and we follow Him. He knows us, and we have a relationship with Him. I just what I so let me let me pose the question I'm this way because you might not have answered it frontally. Can somebody who is in Christ lack anything? I don't think he lack it can lack anything. Why not? He will have everything. What will, Christ, he, what will he have? Because because will he will he, will he, will he have Houses in Germany. It, it will have. It, it. Will he have houses no, no, in no. Germany? That's, that's not. That's not even it. What he. What he will have. Hold on. Hold on. Don't run away. You, you have a way of. Somebody yeah. asks you a question. You don't answer it. Will he have houses in Germany? Yes or no? He can has. It's, it's a possibility that he has in Germany, and it's a possibility that he not have. He is in Christ. He, he, he will has he have houses in Germany. He must, what? Yes, he can. It's possible to have a house in Germany. I'm not, I'm not asking you about possibility. Will he have it? He will. Never mind, Dr. You don't want to answer the question, and that is the wrong answer. Let me let me let me talk to somebody else. Um, Miss Yandang. Comfort Good Yandang. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Yes, sir. Good evening. If somebody is in Christ, will the person have everything? Yeah. Will he lack anything? Yeah, will the person in Christ lack anything? Okay, so... Um, because you have Christ, you have everything. Because you have Christ, based you have on what? Yes, based on what Christ has for you, is essential what He wants for you. Mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. That's not. We are changing the question. Okay. okay. If you have Christ, you have everything. You have everything. Yes. Don't tell me based on what you know. Will you have everything? Yes, you will. Okay. If you have Christ, will you have a house in Germany? If you have Christ, you can have a house in Germany. <laughs> if you want to ask him. 
Never you mind. Can. Never mind. Never mind. You are wasting your time. You, are, you don't understand the scriptures. I'm sorry. Uh, let me try somebody else. Um, Appa. My sister Appa, are you still here? Nope. One day. Yes. Okay, Appa. <laughs> what happened? You went to sleep. <laughs> well, I was trying to get the to unmute. Okay. Right. We're trying to navigate, you know, I mean <laughs> uh, contradictions that don't contradict. We are continuing the same teachings. Uh, if you are in Christ, would you have everything? You have everything in Christ eventually, but not in this life. You have everything in Christ. Mm, but not in this life. Okay. The the things in this life, they are not, they don't belong to Christ. Oh ah, well, like um green um <laughs> where with the, the the people in the Hebrew world of Spain. Yes. They were looking to a city which was not a city on earth. Okay. Because they never got it on earth. But they got it in heaven. Yes, but, so, I, you know, but I'm, I'm asking you a different question now. I say the things on in this world, you know, I mean, yeah. the earth is the Lord's <laughs> the fullness thereof. <laughs> okay. Now, the things on this earth, they don't belong to Christ. They belong to him. Okay, all right. No, so if you are in Christ, okay, you own everything. I don't know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, thank you. I'll come back to you as well. I want to ask one more person before we unravel this. Uh, uh, Benedict Alibe is a, is a good man to, to, to help us. Benedict. <laughs> good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, John. It's going to start calling me sir, 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 sir now. <laughs> Is I'm a good man? Uh, I don't think that I'm a good man. You're a good man. I know you're a good but man. Not bad. I will not deny that you're a, that you're a good man. Yes, Benedict. <laughs> are all things yours? Because I have Christ. Huh? Because Benedict, I have Jesus. Because I, I ask you because I say are all things yours. All <laughs> things is not my own. All things not yours. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do all things belong to Christ? All things belong to Christ because it's one created. Do, everything. Do all things just let's just systematize the discussion. Do all things belong to God? All things belong to God. Okay, just hold on, hold on there. So first premise, all things belong to God. Yes. Does God belong to you? Uh, God belong to me. That is my own heritage. So, do you do, do all things belong to you? If God does not give me all things. Do all so, things belong to you? If God belongs to you, if you are the heir of God, what does that mean? Um, if I'm if I'm a king, um, son, that the prince, that the prince, it means that whatever my father has. I also own it. I'm saying if you are the heir of God, what does it mean? It means that whatever my father has, my father is a king. Okay. It means so, that also belongs to me. So if all things belong to him, does it not mean all things belong to you? Yes, it means that all things belong to me. But there's a problem. Okay, what is the problem? The problem is that my father, Mr. our father, only, only give me himself. Only give me himself. He did not give me opportunity to ask to have other things that belong to him. That is the problem that is there. He will so why, what is so why, does, why does the scripture say all things are yours? 
It's close to all these are mine because my father owns it. And so if, if only has owns all things. I don't. I, why? Why is it that all things are not yours? Because the same father who owns everything decided to take something away from me. The other one allowed me to. Why are they taking away from you? Like now, because he owns everything, I would like to have um, like three or four apartments or five apartments, one down or four. But he has not decided, he has not decided to give me that one. He gave me a right to ask, to ask of him. He gave me some right for healing, healing. When I'm sick, I can come to the house for healing. If I want to talk to him, he gave me this thing here. If, if, if I decide if I want to do anything, I'll talk to him. He don't give me the right to just go into the world and take whatever I want to take because everything belongs to him. He said I should come to him direct and ask. And we're asking if now the time when to give or when to give or the one that he will give me. Even though he's the owner of everything, he's the one that controls everything. But if the Lord that is your shepherd, can you complete it? If the Lord is your shepherd, I will not lack. I will not lack because you know what I need. You know what I want. That's another translation. If the world is, if the Lord is your shepherd, you have everything you need. Yeah, yes, you have everything. I Me, that he knows my need. I have everything that I need, that I want. He really knows everything that I want. Doctor, I think the, 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 the issue here is that God knows all of our needs. And he's saying that because we have him, he will meet our needs. He drew from us saying because God owns everything and God is your father, means that you have everything. Mm, that, that is not, that is not, that is not. I don't know, that's, that's how I see it. That, that's not the issue that I've come to discuss today. Well, let, let me ask one more person, maybe it will help. Uh, let me ask Begay and Dan. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Again, are all things yours? Yes, all things are mine. Can somebody who is in Christ, Christ, lack anything? Not. Nothing. Nothing. Do you own a house in Germany? Yes, I do. You own everything? I own everything. Begin, thank you. Uh, we have to we have to change <laughs> we have to change our psychology, uh, uh, which is part of the reason for this discussion. You know. That's our scripture. Second Corinthians one twenty says, "All the promises of God are in Him." Okay, so if you are in Him, all the promises of God are fulfilled, uh, whether you realize it or not. There's another one in First Corinthians one five. It says that we are rich in Him, in everything. Okay, there's another scripture that says we are heirs of God. There's another scripture that says, all things are ours. Huh? Please, once we are in Christ, don't make a mistake of underrating what you have or what you have. You are not lacking again in anything. He has equalized everything. The, 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 because the most important thing in life is not how beautiful a woman is or, a man, or how handsome a man is. It's not how rich a man is or how poor a man is. It's not how tall or how short. It's not how whatever or whatever, how skilled or talented. The question is, are you in Christ or are you not? And once you are in Christ, that's it. You have everything. And if we, if we don't, if, if, we, if, if we don't internalize that, we're gonna have difficulty navigating in this life. 
we're going to have difficulty in our relationship even to God. Okay, because we're going to be weighed down by our so-called disadvantages. We're going to be weighed down by our so-called inadequacies. And everything is neutralized in God because his strength is made perfect in weakness. I mean, everything, he equalizes everything. He has told us every mountain and hill shall be made low. Every valley shall be exalted. If that is a principle of God, then those of us that are in Christ have no basis for now be bogged down because we are disadvantaged in this area or advantage, you know, no, no. it means that we are not understanding yet the God of the impossible, which we have we started talking about. Uh, so we need to start operating within the framework of what I called kingdom dynamics, okay? One, that God brings out the best out of bad things. So the fact that you are confronted with a bad thing does not mean it is bad. The fact that you are confronted by the Red Sea does not mean you cannot cross. The fact that you are confronted with a mountain does not mean that you cannot pass through. Uh, the mountain will skip, will move for you. The Red Sea will part for you. Uh, the disadvantage will become an advantage for you because God has said he is a God of reversals. All the trees of the field shall know that the Lord brings down the high tree, exhausts the low tree. He's dried up the green tree made the dry tree to flourish, that I, the Lord, have spoken and have done it. So if you are the high tree, uh, don't make too much noise because you know that being high don't mean nothing. Uh, use your height to do all kinds of good things. If you are the low tree, don't complain. Uh, and complain that, you know, you are the low tree because of, you know, because you know that God he does things in the most spectacular ways. So let's look at his equalization. We started the discussion by asking if God is fair. Let's go back to Solomon. Solomon chapter 9, verses 1 to 3. For I considered all this in my heart, so that I could declare it all, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. People know neither love nor hatred by anything they see before them. All things come alike to all. One event happens to the righteous and the wicked. One event happens to the righteous and the wicked, to the good, the clean, and the unclean, to him who sacrifices and to him who does not sacrifice. As is the good, so is the sinner. He who takes an oath and he who fears an oath. This is an Evil in all that is done under the sun, that one thing happens to all. Now, let me ask somebody a question. Um, who can I ask? Oputamuno Belematua. Is Stephen here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is the one thing that happens to all? Death. Thank you. Death is, the, is the equalizer. I beg your pardon? 
No, no, sorry, I mean, the body's so much, there's so much, there's so much noise in your background. Huh? Okay, I don't think he can talk much. Uh, maybe Sam can help us. Sam, please expatiate. Uh, yes, I'm listening. Yes, we're talking about Christ the equalizer. How does he equalize? The Bible says every valley shall be exalted. I, I asked, I asked Okutamuno, he said he uses death to equalize. Uh, please expatiate on that answer. Um, well, the truth of the matter is that whether anyone, whatever status one has in this life, whether rich or poor, educated or illiterate or uh, in exalted in, um, in um, professional uh, positions, occupational positions, or no, uh, vulcanizer and the man with the jeep whose tire he's pumping, both of them will die. Everybody will die. And because everybody is going to die, then from that point of view, nobody turns out to be more important than the other. See, so everybody is the same. Is the same thing. Even the the mere fact that he allows his rain to shine on the wicked and the good, he allows the sun to shine on the wicked and the good. All all that means that everybody from his point of view are all the same thing there is no there is no difference in anyone the differences that we see are those that man has um uh, allotted to himself you know either by accomplishments or by mindset thinking because even the scripture tells us as a man thinker so he is so the one who is is lowly you know his mindset operates at that level that keeps him there the one who is more adventurous and uh, accomplishes a lot of things he believes that he is more exalted but these are situations and and um, these are situations and uh, accolades um um uh, claimed by individuals you know in their respective uh, whatever it is they feel they have been they they have status they have achieved or uh, accomplished but you, in sir. the eyes of sorry go on, go on in the eyes of god all this is don't count everybody is the same thing when when your time is up the timekeeper will simply call your name and whether you were a professor or you were a cleaner is the same thing. Okay, so thank, thank you, sir. So, so uh, yeah, me see. If if every valley, if every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill should be made low, how should we live? How should we behave? <laughs> With great humility. <laughs> Is One sentence will not help me. Ah, oh, well, <laughs> you you understand that Elon, Elon Musk and um, I don't know who to compare him with. Just the ordinary man on the streets are the same. How should we relate to Queen Elizabeth? Mm, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> Well, I think you, you, I mean, just answering normally, you, 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 you have to be polite to her, but you can't worship her. So finding the balance is hard in any case. How do you think, relate to the man that is parking cars on the road? Uh, well, I think we, sh we need to be more polite to that man than Queen Elizabeth. Because Queen Elizabeth already has a lot of honor, honor, and this man, um, 
Well, as God puts it in our hands. How say? should how should the man that is parking cars on the road relate to you? Let me see. Uh, like let me see. Like I'm I'm an ordinary person, which I am. So just with simple courtesies, the same sort of courtesies that I would extend to the person. So. Let me let me let me let me tell you a quick a quick story. Um, the Access Bank headquarters here. I was passing there one day, and this man that was parking vehicles was having some altercation with a with a lady. I don't know whether she was not parking where he said, or if she was trying to park where he said he shouldn't park, or whatever it is. And this woman, this man was very angry, and then he was appealing to the public that look, I have two of these women in my house. You understand that? You understand that notion? Yeah, it happened. It used to happen to me all the time. Yeah. Okay, explain. Well, um, because I'm not very, um, I, I don't have in, I'm, I'm smallish. Let's put it like that. So I, I always, people were just always, always impolite. Um, <clears throat> To me, in in this country, it's better. But in Nigeria, it was very bad. So my my younger sister was always my older sister. She's my auntie. So, so somebody said that to me once that you know I I don't really I, I don't have a lot of problems in this life. But when somebody such as yourself is talking to somebody like myself, and this he was probably like I don't know whether he was a petrol attendant or something, uh, and after a while, I learned that it was God who was called. He was setting me up all the time. And I wasn't allowed to get angry. Often, I just walked away. It wasn't very, it, didn't, it wasn't nice, but and Nigerian men know how to really, you know, put you down. So. Thank you. Barnabas. Yes, please. If every valley shall be exalted and the mountain and hill made low, how should we relate to children? Ah, fantastic. <laughs> we should relate to children like we are also children. In fact, they, sh they should be like, we should take them as we take ourselves. I know some people here will harass me, but so we, there, there's, there's no... We shouldn't see ourselves like we know better than they do, or we have some form of advantage than they do. Uh, I mean, we are all children in the sight of God. Should so. we feel sorry for the handicapped? Hmm. I don't know how to present it now. <laughs> Did you hear the question? But, Yes, I got, I, I get, I, I got the question. Okay. So we feel sorry for the handicap. Yes. I think we should show empathy, but um, feeling sorry, making them feel like they are some, uh, they're, they're in some kind of a disadvantage. I don't think that, that is right. Your but English, your English, your English is too much for me. What is empathy? You say we should feel empathy. Uh, you know that my English is not very good. What is empathy? <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> okay, so what I'm trying to say is we should treat them with um, uh, with, with, with utmost love. We should we should, we should we feel sorry ourselves. for them. You will feel sorry for them. No, I'm not sure feeling sorry for them is the right thing. I'm I'm really, I'm still struggling to put it the way it's in my head. But I'm trying to avoid me saying, let's feel sorry for them. Then it appears like you're looking down on them or you're making them, you're, you're, you're seeing them as some incomplete human being or something. No, I think that's not the right thing. Are we better off than but, the blind? Not at all. Not at all. So okay, yeah, so I think, I, think, I think this helps, yeah. So we should see ourselves as, as not better than they are. So how should we relate to them? 
So we should relate to them like equals, right? Make them feel as important as we think we are. No, uh, we should not show any form of uh, discrimination or any- But do we still consider their blindness? Yeah, so that's what I meant by empathy, right? So I'm sure that the person cannot see this ditch. I should um, act in a way that will make sure that he doesn't fall in the ditch, but not like me making him feel like um, he's, um, not, 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 not like throwing his, his, his situation at his face, that this person is a blind person and so you are, I'm better than him or not. But I should do everything I can to make sure that that harm that is likely to happen to him because of his situation does not happen to you. Thank you. Pege is raising his hand. Yes, Pege. Um, okay, so I, I was going to react to that question, but I think in the end, um, Barabas did justice to it. I think that we should just relate with um, those people as normal people. Of course, taking into consideration their um, yeah, challenge. Sorry, sorry, I, can, I, can I interrupt you for a minute? Can I interrupt you for a minute? Because you may be saying something that is deeper than. Is it normal to be blind? Mm. Is it normal to be blind? Come on, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not very Don't much. interrupt, Mr. Adelike. Don't interrupt. Yeah, go on, Beke. Um. Sorry, what did you say? They don't disturb us. Is it normal to be blind? What was your answer? No, I haven't. I haven't responded. Okay, I haven't responded. Just, is it normal to be blind? I would not consider it normal because, you know, in the in the world or how we see ourselves in society, a normal person would be oh, you have complete eyes, you know. So if you are blind, there's something missing. Is it normal to be left-handed? Um, because most people are <laughs> right-handed. It's not, it's not very normal to be. So to I'm abnormal, because I use my left hand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I mean, it's not, um, it's not a disability. It's, it's, it's but, not a what? Uh, when, when I was growing up, it was a disability. My, my parents used to flog me when they, whenever they saw me using my left hand. <laughs> I, will get, I will get whipped. <laughs> I've had I've had problems with people. You know, when I want to give, you know, even now I do it. Sometimes my right hand is busy, and I'm giving you something with the left hand, and you are looking at me and saying, "Oh, you know, why am I giving you the left hand?" I ask, "Which one can you create? Can you create any of them?" So, who <laughs> made the right hand better than the left hand? I I often get irritated by that. <laughs> you know. But um, I think that was generally, I, we, I, in my secondary school, we had lots of blind um, students. And, you know, that's, that gave me a very different understanding of how these people, you know, behave. I, I asked the blind boy one time if he wanted to see, and his answer was no. You know, we had a conversation and I asked him, you know, so if you have the opportunity now, for your eyes, for you to regain your sight. He said, no, like he didn't want to see. They, they, you know, they do everything, almost everything. You, you, would not, you would not know that they are blind. You will not see that disability. They are in the same classroom with you. You know, they participate. In fact, they, are, they, they, are, they even do better than the ones that, that can see. They do much better than the ones that can that, that can see, you know. So um, I I learned how to relate to them, and sometimes honestly, we forget that they are blind. We forget that they are blind, and before you know, what, what, what about what about situations like autism? Um, autism. Yes. Did, did, did you ever see the the film Rain Man? Ah uh, no. Okay. No, I think anyway, I yes, you know, I mean, because uh, in Nigeria it is it is hidden, but you know, I mean, uh, 
I'm sure at least 20% of, of people are actually autistic. Um, how do we relate? Yeah, I, I, I think we should. Um, so I will borrow, <laughs> I will borrow um, Barabas' word, that um, empathy. We should not feel, we should not feel sorry for them, but we should, Be considerate. we should want to fill that gap. Yes. So you know that there's a gap. What you should be telling yourself if you, if you are in the midst of an autistic um, person is how can I make life better for this person? How can I fill in that gap? You know, um, rather than look at the person and you, and you, you see something um, wrong or something you don't want to be um, associated with. But you know, um, for me, it's, it's just um, be compassionate and think of ways to, to help the person. Last question, how do we, how do we deal with the, the Lazarus at the gate? How do we deal with the beggar? Uh, give, give, give. Freely you have received, freely give. I think that's, that's how I'll deal with the Lazarus and the gift. Okay, please pray for us. Because clearly we need a lot of prayer to navigate yes. all these different things. Thank you, Father. Thank you for today. Our Lord, our God, we give you all the glory for the insight. We give you all the glory for your spirit that you have given us and how you have been helping us every time to rediscover you, to understand the person that you want us to be. Daddy, we know that it is not easy, but Lord, with you, it will be made easy for us. Come and help us, come and be our strength, come and Heal us with your knowledge. Amen. Come and help us to be better every day. Come and direct our paths. Lord, areas that are not clear to us, Lord, come and eliminate those areas. Thank you, Father, for your strength. Thank you, Father, for your wisdom. Thank you, Father, for your word and for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen and amen. Say to the righteous, you are the apple of God's eye. Yeah, the apple of God's eye. Comfort. Apple of God's eye. The apple of God's eye. Some of the apple of God's eye. God bless everyone. Have a lovely evening. Have a lovely evening.